Welcome, benvenuti to 852 Reboot Hong Kong. We're here to record our next episode and we're interviewing David Rosa, who is the co-founder and CEO of NEAT. So David, what uh, initially brought you to Hong Kong? A job in a bank, job in a uh, bank. 19 years ago. Um, and, and you came was, from Italy, right? Uh, I came from London, actually. Okay. Um, and it was supposed to be for a couple of years, as it always is. Ended up being uh, a lot more than that. And then at what stage did you leave the kind of comfort of a, of a banking world into the startup world? Um, about uh, eight years ago now, I um, wanted to move to greener pastures as you do. I first uh, set up a, uh, an asset management company. So not too much of a change moving to the buy side. Um, eventually sold that business and really moved into you know, proper stuff, uh, into fintech, into what is now NEAT about four years ago. Okay, brave move. So, and, and can you tell us a little bit more about what NEAT is? Because I mean, in Hong Kong, you know, fintech took a while to come here. We were all focused on a lot of other startups. And then suddenly about the same time, four or five years ago, suddenly fintech was the new, the new thing, right? It seemed to make a lot of sense in Hong Kong. Um, and licenses came out uh, to allow you to store people's money and use it. Could you explain how, how NEAT evolved from those days? Yeah, sure. So uh, NEAT basically helps B2B traders, particularly growing to world-class businesses, international businesses. Yeah. So not only does it appeal to local startups and young SMEs, but also just as importantly, regional SMEs that operate from emerging markets. And they're looking to have you know, a much more free wheeling kind of environment to do and conduct their business. And Hong Kong is actually the ideal place. Whether you do business with China or you do business globally, it's a fantastic place. For those of us who have been here for a while, we know it, but people are still discovering that and we are a big facilitator of it. So you're not just focusing on the, on the Hong Kong companies, you're helping, you're able to provide this service across Asia, is that how yeah, it works? That's right, actually. The value okay. proposition we bring to the table is that uh, we have this package uh, offering where we not only incorporate a company here in Hong Kong, but we guarantee a multi-currency uh, business account attached to that incorporation. As some of you may know, actually, uh, incorporating a company in Hong Kong is pretty straightforward. There's plenty of people who do it, but the big pain point is to find either a bank account, we're not a bank, but we provide an alternative to that, to, uh, to allow to you know, collect money, to store money, to, re, you know, to, to remit money. Uh, and that's what we do. And uh, you've just had some very good news, right? You've just managed to raise a, a rather large sum of money. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe explain how that came about? Because I mean, obviously, you know, in these times, you know, it's, it's, it's very uplifting to hear that companies like yours are still being able to raise finance and expand. Sure, major milestone for us. Obviously, it didn't happen overnight. For full disclosure, it's been many months in the in the making. But the important thing is that it did close, you know, notwithstanding the, the environment. Um, a lot of work went into it to basically find strategic type of investors. You have probably seen names like Visa, uh, the Pacific Century Group, Mass Mutual Ventures. Uh, this is all, uh, you know, players, big players that actually facilitate our growth. And uh, we both have skin in the game as a result. Um, and. Uh, very much looking forward to take the business to the next level with them as partners. Are you able to explain the kind of how the strategic part works? As you always hear in the in the investment world, the entrepreneurs are always looking for strategic investors. Um, sometimes it's a little bit confusing, right? What does it really mean? Sure. I mean, obviously in your case, they sound like they have a clear role, but maybe you could explain that a little bit. Yes, of course. I mean, it always depends, right, yeah. on the deal. Uh, but uh, take Visa, for example. Uh, the strategic um, uh, agreement that we have uh, is that we're going to go to market with a credit card dedicated to SMEs. Uh, the type of customers that we uh, we support because you had a card before right or right. your own and and that was a prepaid card okay. um, this is going to be a credit card um, yeah. so something that is even more in demand for young companies that are not only you know misunderstood and overlooked by traditional financial institutions but also need something modern that actually responds to their needs uh, something that is not only for the main boss in the company this cards for all employees whether they're physical or virtual something modern basically and will that connect into because what i liked about your need card was you can manage it all via an app. Is the same kind of free flow going to happen with the with the Visa card? Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh. So actually, even better. Uh, even better. From a point okay. of view, from a security angle, uh, from a, an instant gratification kind of kind of yeah. use, right? In, in case you uh, you need to uh, block it, so in case you need to get in touch with customer support, it's all via the app, and it's actually even more enhanced than what you've seen. And then the other partners, the Mass Mutual and Pacific Century. They obviously come from the insurance world, right? Or more. There's, there's an element of insurance, of course, yeah. and, and, and plus plus, as you say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, no surprises that there will be. Uh, sometimes embedded, you don't necessarily feel it as a customer, but you know the, the sheer fact that a credit card, for example, 
has as a bundle, if you will, uh, some travel insurance, for example, built yeah. into that. It's just naturally aligned to have these type of partners for us uh, as a stakeholders. And where do you think, I mean, we know we're in tough times here with COVID, you're talking about travel. <laughs> But um, I mean, where do you see, it's interesting in, in this environment, I do see some, you know, very nimble startups, fintech particularly, uh, really take advantage of the situation and helping people kind of accelerate their move into digital. Where do you see this applying to you? So, I mean, basically scenario, by the way, is that we do get back to travel, you know, hopefully yeah. sooner rather than later, right? Um, but, but in the meantime, as you very rightly say, we're, we're stranded, right? Like we're yeah. stuck. And the great advantage of a pure digital business, it doesn't require you to travel. It doesn't require you to do a face-to-face -face type of meeting, which because of the industry that we're in, these are naturally required by the incumbents, right? So yeah. uh, we've seen a massive you know, boost in demand um, in terms of our services. And so people who were looking to incorporate in uh, in Hong Kong to get business accounts in Hong Kong, but are now not able to travel, they're all coming to us, right? Oh, I see, um, that's very so interesting. It's, it's so not area. being here physically, they can still do the... Correct. Interesting. So let's get on to the, the two things you want to promote. Let's have your, your first plug. So uh, first of all, what we do, right? Um, and, and I think uh, it is uh, really a very unique proposition, right? Because if you are an entrepreneur and you're looking to expand and grow your international business, Hong Kong is the place, right? Uh, doesn't matter what people are talking about, look at it very objectively. It is the ultimate global hub, uh, you know, very, very uh, much of a free market, uh, very uh, simple and low tax environment, very easy to get business done. And we make it even easier if you cannot travel because you can do everything digitally by ourselves. But you have, uh, you also have an office in London, right? I noticed That's you had right. a, yeah. you set up a, a, one of your staff moved across that. Yeah, so. it was more than, 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 than one now. Uh, very important because actually a lot of this uh, value proposition has resonated with European customers as well, okay. right? So in coming into Asia or are they just coming into Asia? So there's, there's two-way flow. There's buyers of yeah. typically Chinese products, which yeah. understandably under this environment is a bit challenged, right? Because the supply chains, apart from face masks, I guess, yeah. uh, is uh, is very uh, very much uh, grounded to to a hold. Uh, but services and European services being sold into Asia actually has been booming. Uh, and then this is something that has been overlooked uh, quite a lot and we, we've been fortunate enough to capitalize on that. So let's get on to the, the second plug. What would you like to talk so about? So the second plug that I'd like to talk about is the Italian community here in Hong Kong. And we're standing in, in outside an Italian restaurant exactly. with the, with the best person. Right? <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm really heartened by seeing how still global Hong Kong is in the sense that Italy, my home country, has been very badly affected yeah, by the coronavirus, as I'm sure that. you've seen. And it's really heartening to see that, you know, people, whenever they go out to a restaurant for choice, it looks like they continue to actually favor Italian restaurants. And I really think this is very much in the spirit of Hong Kong, a true global city, a true, you know, uh, Asia's world city as its position. Uh, and it's, it's great to see because I think this kind of, you know, community social fabric is extremely important in difficult times. The more important thing is, can I use my neat card to get a discount in an Italian restaurant? Depends which one you can. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So can we have the uh, the domain name so people can find you? Absolutely. It's neatcommerce.com. Neatcommerce.com. N-E-A-T commerce.com. Correct. Thank you very much. Thank you.